I'm Richard Herring. You're about to watch Richard Herring's Letter Square Theatre Podcast. It is quite good. You can help us make more of these by donating some money at www.gofasterstripe.com slash badges or just buying one of my DVDs there or come and see me on tour or you can uh, come and see this live. That's it. That's, I think that's, that's about it. Uh, if you see me in the street, just give me some money. <laughs> um, uh, or, you know, I am prepared to come around and give you a hand job for £25. What do you think? I've got the same size hands as Hermione from Harry Potter. That swings the deal. Okay, let's enjoy Rich Tang's Leicester Square Theatre podcast. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Leicester Square Theatre. You're much better than last week's audience. Will you please welcome a man who was eating a cornetto that he has technically paid for. Please welcome Richard Herring. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hello. Lovely to see you all. Thank you for coming. It's lovely to see you all. Uh, welcome to Richard Herring's Leicester Square Theatre podcast. Or as there's a few, I've noticed a few cool kids have started calling it Rahalester Pun. <laughs> oh, there's quite a lot of them in tonight. Uh, and so uh, I'm very excited. I was away on tour uh, last week. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's exciting. Uh, as you know, I'm, uh, my wife and uh, my pregnant wife is at, at home. It's that kind of week. So, so as, as I was away, I was thinking, you know, I've got oh, special things waiting at home for me. Because what I knew is that uh, my new iPhone 6 uh, had arrived at home just after I'd left. And uh, there it is. So I was very excited. And I thought, you know, I might die before I got to see the actually hold it. That was the terrible fear I had. So, uh, very nice. And the amazing thing is, I predicted the iPhone 6 years ago. If you watch Christ the Bike DVD, was, there were only iPhone 4s there. And I said, one day there'll be an iPhone 6. And people, it looks to me like I was mad, but there it is. I'm like Sally Morgan. Uh, so, um, there will never be an iPhone 7, though, I, I, I guarantee that. I'm like Nostradamus on this stuff, I'm telling you, you will find out. So it's very exciting to have uh, an overpriced phone. That At least this one doesn't, the battery doesn't tick down in front of your face yet. <laughs> Literally, the other one I had just, I could see it just going down. It would last 30 minutes if I was lucky. So um, uh, we'll just meet uh, some of our audience. Oh, we've seen all these guys before. What about, are you the guy that I've said you're, you, you haven't been here before, but you have been here before for the last two times? Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> and what was your name again? I should know. James. James, you've been here so often. What fun stuff have you been up to this week, James? What have you done this week that has been exciting for you? What, is the, what amazing things have happened to you this week? I went on the internet. You, you went on the internet for a bit. <laughs> when you say for a bit, do you mean like for a bit or just for a while? But for a bit, okay. Yeah, well, it's fine. It's good. It's good for that. Uh, and uh, uh, what do what do, what, uh, what 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 do you do again? It's IT or something. It's uh, it's so rude of me. I should know what you do. You're not a nuclear physicist, because that's this guy. Is it, do you know each other? That's my dad. Oh, is it your dad? You've had <laughs> you've had sex with a lady. <laughs> That's incredible. I should come to you because he's turned out pretty well. I, to be honest, I thought it was your. I thought it was your boyfriend. I didn't want. I didn't want to. I don't want to stereotype nuclear physicists, but I think they're all predatory homosexual. <laughs> that is. Well, that's what I thought. So you've turned that around, and that is a wonderful, wonderful. Have you got any uh, advice for me as a, as a, as a father, what I should do to make a son turn out as well as this? Get lots of sleep while you can. Get lots of sleep while I can. That's good. Am I allowed to sleep when they're, in, when they're a, a child and just leave my wife to do it? Is that what you did? Yeah. Yeah, that's good to know. Uh, have you not gone into the nuclear physicist business? No. Do you, does, that, does that disappoint you? Because that's if my child is not a comedian, I'm going to lead on a hillside and disown it. That's the way I look at it. There's no money in it. There's no money in nuclear physics. But there's bombs, though. that's the thing. There is bombs. What do you work on? What, what do you do, Ryan? What do you do? You're in a band? No. You, uh, you should be in a band. You're good looking. It's very good looking. It's uh, I'm going to do that. It's kind of, when I say that to you, it's really a, a massive insult to say, he's very good looking, so uh, uh, I'm, I'm not sure it is your child. Uh, so, um, well, tell me what you do. We've got to get him, get him back on. Unemployed. 
You're unemployed. <laughs> Good luck finding it. Have you thought about nuclear physics? <laughs> it's lovely to have you back. Thank you for coming along. And uh, we will... Um, I thought, you know, I tried to be nice to the audience this week, but it's still, I still came out. I'm a horrible person, I've realised. So I would just like to apologise to that man in Manchester with the whole Cornetto thing. But, you know, maybe just man your till properly. That's all I'm saying. So um, that was the lesson for you. What I didn't tell Sarah Millican is that I also, every time I go to a service station, I steal one pick and mix from every pick and mix that I go past. Because they're really expensive. I reckon over the course of a tour, I could steal about £60 worth of stuff just from one suite at a time. But I would quite like to see what the authorities would do if I was caught stealing one suite, whether they would... I'm just... You know, if I get caught, I'm delighted. If I don't get caught, free suites. That's the way I look at it. So, uh, you know, people are very disappointed in me. Kind of old Richard Maidley uh, feeling going on there. So, um... <laughs> Just disappoint people are generally disappointed in him. That is all I was implying. There's another edit for you, Ben. And so, um, <laughs> I didn't say a thing. Will you please welcome a woman who is best known for being Amanda Snell in the fantastic ITV show You Can Choose Your Friends. That is what everyone remembers. And Vicky Jackson in Time Gentlemen, please. She was in London in Rosic Stricken World and Fist of Fun. She's also the host of Rule of Three, a, a quiz show that. I wrote for that never made it to series. <laughs> and it uh, was in Shush, a library sitcom that I script edited that never made it to series. <laughs> all of those things, all of those famous things have a connection with me. Will you please welcome Rebecca Front, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Rebecca, Front. <laughs> Rebecca Front from everything. She is from everything. Come in, sit down. How are you doing? I had actually forgotten that you were connected with some of those things. I was Isn't exactly. That awful? And That's they're all the things, they're the only things that you've done that have not won awards. No, that that's is true. not true. It is that's true. That's not true at all. <laughs> it's, there's a Time strong Gentlemen Please went on and on and on forever. It did, but no one, you know, no one Nobody liked watched it. watched it. <laughs> <laughs> it was good, it, you know, it paid for my house. I told, I've told you that story about, because that was one of the few, one of the only shows where I had a catchphrase. My cat. Well, actually, I had a few in that, but my uh, whenever I, my character came on, I had to go hello like that. Hilarious. You don't need to. And, um, <laughs> you can tell from that reaction how many people remember that. <laughs> and then sometime of well, I suppose when the second series was going out, my my mother-in-law at the time was was quite ill, and uh, there's already a downer in the room. And I took her to a hospital appointment because I'm fundamentally a very very nice person. And I took her to this hospital appointment. We were sitting there, and she was kind of slightly confused and, and distressed because she was at this hospital appointment. And all of a sudden, this porter came barreling down the corridor towards her and went, Hello! <laughs> <laughs> and she really, she leapt out of her seat, just went, Why did he do that? Why did he do that? Why is that man shouting? I just know it's going, It's just, I'm, on, I'm in this show on the telly that you've never seen, and amazingly, somebody has. And <laughs> The occasion. one time I got recognised. I've been recognised because I played the postman in that series, no, in no. the first series, uh, about four times. And I've occasionally been recognised as just the postman. That's all they know <laughs> that I've done. You're the postman. You're, You're the postman. postman from, from time to time. time <laughs> Whatever, did you not get any other work after that? <laughs> no, that was all I ever did. Did you not try telling them you were actually a postman? <laughs> he was, yeah, in should, real life. He should have. He should have. There were no fat postmen, apparently, so he should have known. But you're uh, very slim, Richard. I am now, but I wasn't when that man recognised me. So there we go. Uh, and uh, and you were in. You can choose. Your, who remembers? You can choose your friends. <laughs> that was good, though. It was really good. That was a really good program. No, well, obviously not. That was one. That's the last thing I had on 2007. That was. <coughs> That's quite a long time. <laughs> that, that was the last. That's the last time I was on TV. So, uh, but maybe you I ruined it for you. Maybe that's what happened. Could there. be. If I hadn't been in that, I yeah. probably would have got a series and gone yeah, run, maybe. run, and run. Could be that. That's probably what it was. <laughs> Me, Julia McKenzie, and Claire Skinner. Yeah. <laughs> ruined it. For it's, you. It's, it's all those talented people. Because Claire people. Skinner's done nothing since, nothing. has she? Nothing. Like I remember when, during when we were she played my sister in that, and we were in the garden did go and scene together. She said, oh, I'm doing, a, I'm doing a lot of things with comedians at the moment because there's uh, and half a double act. So I'm doing this other show about a family that, with Hugh Dennis. I don't know what's going to happen with that. I wonder, I wonder which of these two things will go on to be a massive success. <laughs> well, there's no way of knowing, is there? That's what she said to me. Uh, so, <laughs> it was all right. It was all right. Uh, so, uh, 
I'm just going to cry now. I'm going to die. No, no, save uh, that for later. But uh, I first saw you in the mid 1980s in the Bobo Girls. Uh, did you I, think the Bobo I think Girls? I saw you at the Oxford Playhouse. You came back and did like one gig at a charity thing. In the, Is that just your way of mentioning that I'm a bit older than you? No, yeah, you're slightly <laughs> you older. You came back, you yeah, know. Slightly older, but only slightly older. Only very slightly. Um, yes, indeed. Bobo Girls, musical double act. Is there, are the Bobo awesome. Girls getting back together? I'm sitting here for lunch tomorrow. <laughs> about the other Bobo Girls. Um, no, I no. don't think that's going to happen. It was like a musical. Yeah, we did sketches and we did songs, and I wrote all the songs. My right. brother wrote all the sketches. Um, and then my friend Sean Ed William and I did them, did yeah. the songs and the sketches. And um, yeah, I mean, we got a couple of radio series. I think we touted for telly, but we didn't really get anywhere. And then Sean Ed had become a radio producer by the time we did the second series and actually had already, I think, decided that that was sort of the way she wanted to go. She wanted to go into production. And, I, and the second series we did on radio was produced by Armanando Ar Ar Yarnanucci. Oh, yes. And no. so around the time Sean Ed was deciding she wanted to go into production, Armanando, um, said, I'm doing a couple of shows and do you want to come and... I remember him saying, do you ever do anything without Sean Ed? And I said, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, obviously. And then he said, and do you ever do anything which doesn't involve singing? So I <laughs> <laughs> said, yeah, quite a lot, actually. I mean, that's that sort of mainly what I do. So he got me in, first of all, to the Mary Whitehouse experience. And I did a couple of sketches in that. And then he got me into On the Hour. On the Hour, which I wrote for <laughs> and did win awards. So your yes. theory goes down the toilet. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but that was, oh, we had Steve Coogan on uh, last week. I know, how him? was he? He was very, he was, he, he's matured into a fine young man. If you he's, ignore all the stuff got, that he does. We're not, nobody's listening to this. No, I can no. say something privately. And yeah. He's got ru very good looking. Yeah, I mean, he was always kind of, you know, but he's very attractive. There was now. a ruggedness to him, yeah. yeah. No, he looked a bit he's like a teacher last really week. He's really well. Well, maybe that's my he time. He had his hair cut a bit weird. He, that was by his own admission. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so it was, that was... Uh, did you realise at the time when that group of people were brought together by Armando that it was going to turn, you know, explode into this uh, <coughs> phenomenon of its generation? Um, no. Uh, no, <laughs> I mean, I think... I, I'm, I was interested in what you were saying earlier about... Because I'm a terrible pessimist, so I never think good of anything. I always think everything's going to turn out disastrously. So, no, I certainly <laughs> didn't think it was going to be a massive hit. Um, and, of course, it wasn't a massive hit in the sense that... It was, I mean, it's still, it stayed, I think it's lasted, it's stayed the test of time, mm -hmm. lasted the court, I don't know what the phrase is, but anyway, it's, it's kind of, it holds up. Yeah. Um, but I d it didn't feel like it was a massive hit. It's not like we were being kind of, you know, paparazzi and, and no. sort of people were kind of coming up to us in the streets and going, I just want to say I love your show, or anything like that. So it was a very slow burn and it had very small viewing yeah. figures, even on tele, in listening figures on radio. And yeah. Um, so it didn't feel like a massive thing, but it, it did feel like a very, very, very good thing. I yeah. did know that it, this was what I wanted to do, that kind of comedy. What was it like working with Patrick Marburg? Well, I love Patrick. I was in the Oxford Review with Patrick. Yeah. But the way you phrase that, though... Well, I love Patrick I, I love but that's Patrick That's because Marburg. of you and Stu, because I spent so much time at the beginning of my career working with you and Stu, uh, who, were, who always seemed well, dare I say, to have a slight problem. <laughs> I never fully understood it, to I be think honest. it was made partly in fun. Yeah, well, I hope it was. But no, I love Patrick, and I, I did the Oxford <laughs> Review with him, oh, and yeah. um, so I spent a lot of time. And it was Patrick, really, when I started doing things like on the hour, he was the only one I knew, because right. I didn't know Armando or anybody else at all, so Patrick <laughs> was my, my kind of buddy. I knew Dave Schneider a little bit. So there. Okay. That's hoist you, it's your petard, okay. isn't it? And you are afraid of going in lifts. <laughs> It's weird. What's that about? Um, yes. Have you, but you've been in a lift quite recently. Have you got? Have you, got, have you managed to go back? And you've cost, you got claustrophobia. No, yeah, I mean, really it's quite serious. Bad really. Bad claustrophobia. Um, it's. Uh, I went in one yesterday. I'm trying to do them all the time. Not right. all the time, but quite a lot. Of Only time. we need to go upstairs. <laughs> that's my advice. No, no, or that's down. the thing with okay. with. Therapy. I'm having cognitive therapy, which is which okay. is supposed to help with phobias. No, it's not only when you need to go upstairs. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You just do them. You just have to. Every time you see a lift, you have to go. Oh, better get in that then. <laughs> so, have, you, have you seen the film Sliding Doors? Because that is very like. Yeah, it's you have to be careful well doing that because you might change your life completely. Well, I'm, yeah, but I might come out not a claustrophobic. That's true. And that would be quite that's a good. Because you made that part of the when you, in the thick of it, part of your character mm. in the thick of it was you had to go upstairs everywhere. Part yeah. of it because you have to go upstairs everywhere. Yeah, I mean, I, well, Armando just is very good at sort of plundering bits like that yeah. from people's lives, and he he didn't know actually that I was 
claustrophobic. I assumed he did, because his office was on the fourth floor, <laughs> fifth floor, and I would, would always arrive going, <gasps> <laughs> I think he just thought I was asthmatic, but I just assumed <laughs> he thought, he knew I was claustrophobic. Um, and I'm sure I'd left him at the doors of lifts and things and said, I'll meet you upstairs. I don't know what he thought, but anyway, he didn't know. So when I, he was just saying, you know, we, look, we film a lot of these things, um, walking down corridors, and there's a lot of motion, a lot of movement going on, and sometimes in and out of lifts, and, and I just went, whoa, just going to stop you there. And then he beetled off to the writer's room and right. <laughs> said, right, make her a claustrophobic. It'd be hilarious. <laughs> but it was, of course, I mean, it was actually. If you're playing a, a character who isn't claustrophobic, are you able to be non-claustrophobic? Well, theoretically, it would yeah. work like that, but yeah. I'm not that good an actress. But I think, <laughs> in, in theory, you should, I should be so much in character yeah. if my character isn't claustrophobic. That is, in fact, one of the things that you talk, we've talked about in in therapeutic, <laughs> it's terrible, I'm not telling you everything about my cognitive therapy. Um, but we have talked about that sort of thing. Can I, could See, I try is, pretending? This is kind of therapy. It this is, is and, I, and I'm being paid, which is fantastic. Um, but yeah, that notion of could, could I get in a lift and pretend to be not scared? But it turns out I'm not, I'm a bit shit. <laughs> no, 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 I can't. And do you know, does it come from, I, I was reading, I haven't read your, you've, you've written a book about... Uh, you haven't read my book. I haven't read it. <laughs> I realised today, oh, I probably should have read that. Yeah. But what I did instead... It might have been nice, Richard. I read a couple of reviews of it, and I reckon right. I picked up, I reckon I picked up enough to bluff my way through. <laughs> Wasn't there something to do with Durham Cathedral? Was that what got you in uh, cognitive That's what the reviewers said. <laughs> Yeah, it was. It was the, the spiral tower of Durham Cathedral on right. a very hot, very crowded day. I'm not going to tell you any more than that because you've got to buy the books. Buy the books, of course. It's coming out in paperback soon. You can buy it then. It'll be much know. cheaper in paperback. I, I, I could probably get a free copy. Well, you, you could. I've got a whole box of them at home, but I'm not giving you one now because you made no but effort whatsoever. What I often do is when I'm in shops, I just steal things uh, or just throw the money. I might just throw the money vaguely at someone I think might be in charge of the shop. But don't you only steal tiny amounts of things? I do, yeah. I might just like, steal a page at a time. You're a sort of homeopathic thief. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just a tiny amounts of stuff. You could just have the dust jacket of my book. You yeah, could nick that, that from a good. shop from Waterston somewhere. So, that, but, so there a lot, but then that, that's quite, if things are so in, rooted in, because there's a couple of things, they've got a few little uh, phobias. There was a, like a final destination style fear that, uh, everyone was going to die in your family, which because I'm obsessed with death. Yeah, no, no, I've got big problems with death. Um, uh, uh, yes, that was that was I was school phobic for. I am a yeah. bit of a nut. I mean, it must be said, I am a bit. Um, that's not a phrase that we use in the <laughs> mental health community. If you are um, one, you're allowed to use. But that I, I'm allowed to say okay. it about myself. Yeah. I, I'm very sympathetic <laughs> towards everybody else's problems. Um, but yeah, I, school phobia for a bit. Stopped going to school for a term, yeah. then started again. Um, claustrophobia. I'm a terrible hypochondriac. I mean, really, oh, awful. Does that mean you're not very good at being a hypochondriac? <laughs> <laughs> it means Pickling I'm really, really, <laughs> really good. Really good at it. <laughs> you can't count. You can't count that as a phobia. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, well, that's what sort of, so you're a very sensitive child, or just because you're obviously very clever. You went to Oxford University, and you have to be very clever. Yes, <laughs> yes, indeed you do. Although they were letting anybody in the year I went, <laughs> as we've established a couple of years before you went. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I suppose I was a sensitive child, and and I come from quite a neurotic family. I mean, we're they're lovely, my, well, as you'll know when when you read my book. Yes, um, they're fabulous, my family, and we're very, very, very close. You probably met them at some point because my family I'm come to all sorts of things, yeah. and they're very supportive, and they're lovely. But we are all a bit, you know, mad. <laughs> But that's good. But like on on actor terms, you seem the most sane actor I've ever met. So oh, I'm really good at seeming sane. Yeah. Really good. People often say that to me. You know, God, you <laughs> say, how are you so calm? You're yeah. so relaxed. I'm absolutely not. I'm absolutely not. I'm a bundle of nerves and anxiety. But I have one um, killer trait which really works in my favour, which is I've got a low voice. And if you've got a low <laughs> voice. It's just I uh, just have a low voice, but people think you're calm. It's right. really bizarre thing that people just think you're very chilled. I'm not. I'm just <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a crazed person with a low voice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just not sure. I've met a lot of actors, and you know, you seem like a regular person. Uh, so, which you know, that's the highest compliment I can pay you as an actor. <laughs> <laughs> you but are being much nicer to me than you were to say. You told Sarah that she wasn't very intelligent because she believed in ghosts. I that know. No, I said, no, I said she would believe in ghosts because she wasn't very oh, intelligent. Right. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> it's much ruder than, than you. 
<laughs> this is even worse. You don't London. believe in ghosts, do you, Rebecca? I would really like to. <laughs> no, I don't. no, I don't, to be honest. But I, I love ghost stories. I love hearing people talking about ghosts, and I'd love to. I love yeah. the idea of that. So do I, but that's why I asked that question. And, uh, but, and also, with me and Sarah, we deliberately t try and... She takes it as a compliment because she knows that I'm doing it so that she can come back at me with something but worse. She was crying back. She was crying back. <laughs> she, was, she was really genuinely upset. Yeah, I, t I take that as a victory. So, uh, <laughs> She also said she then. was she was she genuinely doesn't like you. Yeah. You know, she told me. But <laughs> anyway, you believe what you want to believe. That's Richard. right. As long as it leads to good entertainment. I was. Uh, <laughs> no, that's the thing. It, it wasn't even entertainment. <laughs> just slightly embarrassing. And people were applauding. It was just awkward. That. It was, though, wasn't it? It was just unpleasant. It's the comedy What's that all about? You get people in, you're just horrible to them. <laughs> just nasty. I don't know. Stop I don't. it. I don't know what's wrong with Can I just me? say one thing? Don't do that with your child. Okay. Really. <laughs> it's not a good idea. Well, you can give I me advice. You have had, and, you know. You've had your advice. You, we wrote in to Time Gentleman, please, your second child. We did. You became pregnant. It was such a long series. <laughs> I'm going to say you became pregnant during the filming of it. It wasn't like that. It was, <laughs> I think you became yeah, pregnant it, at home. It was a weekend. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, uh, it was such a long record that we, you started off not being pregnant, became pregnant, and were pregnant enough during the series that we had to put it into the yeah, script. Indeed. So Miss Jackson had a, had a baby with... Um, with yeah, who was the It was Bar Uncle Barry, Uncle the, uh, Barry. who was at my absolute favourite character in time. If you haven't seen Time, gentlemen, please. It's, it's really it's good, actually. actually it's amazing a great show. Uh, Uncle Barry was, <laughs> Uncle Barry was uh, the, the pub landlord's uh, old elderly uncle, who probably was his father as well, but we didn't, you know, that was the implication. And he had kind of jet black hair, but every time, every week, something would get poured on his head and it would all be dying and it would all come down his face. Uh, absolutely. But it was really funny. It was, it was funny. It was funny. It was very funny. But then, you, then you had a little baby who had jet black hair. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry for that baby. That's right. We I did didn't. paint the baby's head black yeah. so that it could. You were going to use my baby. Was there, was, there was some discussion did, about about when did you the say baby no? was born. No, I think. No, I think. Uh, I seem to remember we we did discuss it, and I think yeah. I quite liked the idea. And then I thought, actually, it's going to be a pain in the ass, yeah. isn't it? Because I'm going to have to change nappies as well as remembering lines, that's and that's going to be and that die might and that die might yeah. give them brain damage of some kind. So, yeah. but probably we could find out that chance. Probably the actual baby we use will be like 12 years old now. Could, yeah, could get on as a 13 in fact. as a guest. Mm. Yeah, because of course it's the same age as your baby, yes, so that's baby. how you were able to do that. I thought, wow, she's good at maths. <laughs> I spent the hours with my daughter. Oh, yeah, it's that, that age. It was, a, it was a wonderful series. No one saw that. No one saw you. Could, you could choose your friends was up against uh, an episode of Big Brother where uh, someone used an offensive racial epithet. And that's why... So we, were getting, we got quite a lot of viewers up to the point where Big Brother started and then for the last half an hour, everyone stopped watching. Oh. That's my excuse for the... It was good, stopping. though. You can choose friends. It was beautifully yeah. written. I mean, you can't say that because you wrote it, but it was beautifully written. It was very good. I'm your biggest fan, Rich. I know you enjoy are. You're, this. You You've got somebody on this stage who actually likes you I and know. admires <laughs> you. Enjoy it. It was. It's enough for me that you liked it, Rebecca. You're the <laughs> only person who did. Uh, so uh, Lauren Bacall stole your husband's chip. Is the chapter of the book? Yeah. Is one of the chapters yeah. in the book that you have failed to buy? <laughs> yes, my book, Curious, available in all good bookshops. Um, yes. Can you get it on Kindle? Yeah. Yeah, I should and really e have done that. Shouldn't I? That was easy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you really made no effort yeah. whatsoever. There's an, e there's an audio book with me reading oh, it. There? You could have done that as well. It's oh. cheaper than the hardback, but no. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. After all I've done for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy a hundred copies on the way out. Um, uh, and you're not... What happened with Lauren Bacall, though? I wouldn't, oh, I'll read the book. <laughs> that's not... You can't do that with all my questions, though. Read the book. No, that's actually, Lauren, Lauren Bacall, that's... We, we use that as a chapter, I say we, it makes it sound like I didn't write it, but my, my editor was quite keen to use it as a chapter title, even though that is basically the story. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, really. Um, I took my husband out for dinner for his birthday. And, and to Lauren McCall's Lauren house. <laughs> <laughs> No, but a posh restaurant. Yeah. And this woman sort of walked past and took one of the chips off his plate. That's and um, rude. Very rude. And so, you know, he's, he kind of did that. You know, who did that? And it was Lauren Bacall. I mean, what are the chances of that happening? <laughs> she could do that whenever she wants. Yeah, she could. She's like and me and pick a mix. That was, yeah. <laughs> it's 
accent. Well, I no. think if anyone sees me, I will be sent to prison. That, don't, would that be good? Do you think that would be good for my career? If, Stealing pick and mix. Well, if I'm caught and then there's, you know, I don't, wouldn't make the news, would it? No one would get a man, a man who was once on TV in 2007, <laughs> stole a... I, what I steal is the ones, they're like Coca-Cola bottles, but they're, they're like flavoured like bubble gum. Do you know those ones? No, they're good. They're, worth, they're not worth buying, but they are worth stealing. <laughs> I think you'd need to steal something more interesting than pick and mix if it's going to be good for your career. I see myself as a Robin Hood figure, though, because I think... Do you give them to the poor? Not exactly. <laughs> but in, uh, c compared to the pick and mix magnates mm. who make all the profit from pick and mix, I bought some... I felt a bit guilty about it, so this tour I did buy one small bag of pick and mix to make up for the six pick and mix that I had stolen on my various journeys. It cost £1.59 for 100 grams of pick and mix. Is that quite a lot then? It's a lot. So it's like about 10p a sweet. I'm not really no, 20p a sweet. That does sound so like a lot. So I right? see me stealing pick and mix <laughs> as a satirical... Because money is meaningless. It's an abstract concept. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, I, I know you you'll saying, understand yeah. this. Mm. Uh, no, I didn't understand it, but I do remember you saying it. <laughs> And so, you know, I'm satirising the whole idea yeah. of money by not using it you're, properly. You're the Banksy of pick and mix, really. Yeah. yeah. And also, you get free pick and mix at the end. But it is a criminal so offence. So I'm a criminal, so there's a, like an edginess to me that makes me, that gives me the sexiness that I've lost because I've become 10 years older than I used to be. Young women look at me and go, yeah, that's the guy who that's steals. The pick and mix guy. <laughs> And then they go, yeah, but he's stealing that cola bottle that <laughs> tastes like bubblegum. That's really not sexy at all. Nice. If he was a licorice thief, that would be a whole other thing. <laughs> if you had to choose between dating... I'm sorry that your son, 15-year-old son, is in the audience. If you had to choose between... I, I can't have no control over the character of Richard Herring. <laughs> if you had to choose between... I feel embarrassed, because I, I do genuinely... I see you... like and I'd, you are, as we've established, very slightly older than me, and I do see you as an, old, an older sister figure. And then when you were on, when you were online on Nimrod, I was very intimidated by you because you're like a proper actress and proper really? star. And but then I was, and then lo loads of comedy fans would come up to me and say, "Oh, God, what's it like working with Rebecca Front? She's so sexy." I go, "Do you not do not talk about Rebecca Front like that? That is, she, why did you she do that? She is not you sexy. Idiot. What you, what is, you would say? She is sorry, above sorry. sexiness. So young men yeah. were coming up to yeah. you and saying Rebecca Front is sexy, and yeah. you were saying, "Don't talk to don't her you dare and don't talk, say that." Don't talk. Thank to you her. very That's right. much, I was protect, Richard Herring. I see you very much, as I said backstage, like the Virgin Mary. <laughs> In a way, I thought I'd get the Virgin Mary and a whore on the show. <laughs> <laughs> this week. I thought I would do that, and then I couldn't find... Jordan said she wouldn't come on. That is... <laughs> uh, so, uh, so, I don't like having to ask... This is embarrassing for me to even have to ask you anything like right. this, because I think you are above this and unsullied. <laughs> It's much more offensive than calling you a whore. Uh, if you... That man is furiously angry. Or just very excited by the idea... The virgin whore dichotomy that all men have to... Women are allowed to be other things in between those two. Or both. Uh, if you had to choose between dating a man... Uh, who was a six foot tall penis mm. with a face though, obviously. It's not just going to be a... Yeah, there's nothing sentence. weird about it. So it's on the face. Is a, it's based on that... Two, those two Tory MPs, the one who, who sent a picture of his cock to that woman, he, I thought he looked quite like a penis. And then I saw Mark Reckless, who looks exactly like a penis. <laughs> he doesn't have a neck, but he has kind of a bald head. So it's like a penis, might have put like a little bit of a wig on to make it look like it's a head, and just to kind of maybe wear a hat to cover up the, the little... You know, are we the still talking about Mark Reckless, or are we now talking well, about the your penis? penis they're, they're the same, one and the same. Okay. I'm giving you my inspiration for this question, because some people... Like, Sarah thought I was being weird for asking this question. Yeah, I know. I thought that was yeah. unfair. Yeah. It's a question I'm sure you get asked all the time. I do, So, yeah. that's the man. He's a six-foot-tall man, but he is, uh, resembles exactly a penis. Oh, he resembles one. He's well, not one. Well, because he is one. He resembles a penis. There is a difference between a man who resembles well, a penis, which is, you know, not impossible that I one mean, can I mean, I don't... Well, there's a philosophical but discussion a man who is a penis. because I don't know whether he... <laughs> If he was a penis, that implies that he used to be attached to some gigantic yes. mammal of some kind. 
and has become detached and is now a separate penis. It does imply that. that much it right, is. but I imagine him as never having been attached to another animal, so he's a penis. Okay. So I would imagine it's like the elephant. Penis. It's like the elephant man, but so it's a man, but he's been born and he's been born as a penis, and his parents have gone, oh, giving him away to a fair. <laughs> and, uh, Anthony Hopkins has come in and said, oh, look, I'll try and give you a life. Uh, and then uh, the penis decides to look, c- commit suicide by lying on his back. OK, I've got that one. Okay. The or, <laughs> spoiler alert on the plot of The Elephant Man there. <laughs> and the life of The Elephant Man, let's face it. It wasn't just a film, it was a real John Merrick, a real person. Uh, or a man who has, instead of a penis, has a tiny man who may one day become detached and go and live in a Lilliput kind of land where he is the six foot tall penis. No, that's not part of it. Uh, it's a man, it's a man who is a is penis, it's like a regular man, but he's attached uh, to another man and you have to date either the man who had the man instead of a penis or I can't believe this is a complicated lost question. lost the will to live. Okay. I, I mean, I'm going for the man with the other man because that way you get two men, I suppose. Yeah. That's, that would be all right because then if you get bored with one, you've still got the other one that you can talk to. Yeah. I suppose. Yeah. But I mean, really, Rich. What? Really. It's <laughs> a good question. I, I, as, as your older sister, can I just say <laughs> this? You are a clever man. You went to took, Oxford. Took you know, a long time look to think at yourself. <laughs> look at what you've become. It's very hard to come up. <laughs> Very hard. Think of of the child that is in your wife's womb right now. You've paid to come and see me. (laughs) You like this so much. These people come every week. Even though I ask that to everyone, at least I change them around. These people come every week because they're hoping one day you might change. (laughs) They're waiting for redemption, and it's not going to happen. It could be the case. All right, we'll, we'll leave that. I'll ask you proper actor questions. I sense. My questions are not welcome here. <laughs> uh, so, um, do you, you on. know you're in Lewis. I don't watch this programme. Well, you're too busy reading my book. <laughs> <laughs> you're on everything. I can't, I've watched Grandma's House. That's really good. I've watched The Thick of It. That's really good. Uh, I have, I've watched some of Nighty Night. It was good. Not as good enough for me to watch the rest of it. <laughs> don't want it was in the days before <laughs> everything was on everywhere, so you had to watch it on and I forgot to watch it. Uh, you were good on it, though. But in Lewis, that's like Inspector Morse, right? But then Inspector Morse died, and they thought, oh, it's a shame. And they thought, can we, can we just carry it on with a different bloke being Inspector Morse? Why don't we bump up the bloke, the bloke who was his sidekick? Is it, am I getting this right? Just let me know. Yeah, so the bloke is like, let's make it about him. Mm. Are you hoping that Kevin Waitley will die <laughs> so that then... <laughs> You will get bumped up. No, because I'm not the sidekick. I'm no. the boss, you see, as you would know if you'd ever Oh, well, it's Billy it. Piper's husband. is. The Indeed, it's Lawrence. Yeah. Uh, but when we... The first episode we did, we did a sort of pilot episode of that, and um, they used to... When, if, if you ever saw Morse, which you would have done, because you did, went yeah, to Oxford, it was great. Um, and it was a training Amazing, video. Really, but I thought, you know, I wouldn't watch this if he was dead. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, that's not an idiot. <laughs> it's called Morse. It's about him. But on Morse, they yeah. well, obviously, like they do in police dramas, they had um, they had a boss. They had a. It's like if it Little and Large, if yeah. Large had died, you wouldn't go. Oh, carry on watching Little I and think Little did. and someone else just come in. Little and someone worse than Little will come in. <laughs> You'd start watching it. That's what I'm saying. Sorry, carry it's on. It's a different show. Anyway, the yeah. point I'm making is, uh, the first episode we did, um, they. I'd been cast as the boss, and in Morse, in the original thing, they'd had an actor called, I think it was J- uh, an actor called James Grout who played the boss, who's a really fantastic actor. And we went to the, we had a, a press screening for this first sort of pilot episode of Lewis, and um, one of the press people went out in front of an audience of journalists, like, you know, the whole, all the Guardian and the Times and everybody, and said, well, we're so excited about this new series, you know, lots of people really loved Morse, and they love the character of Lewis, and they're going to be so excited to see this new series. And, um, and a lot of people are going to be looking forward to seeing James Grout coming back. Sadly, James hasn't been very well. Um, so I'm really sorry to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and that was how I was introduced. I'm really sorry to tell you we've got Rebecca Front. <laughs> and I was sitting there just thinking, oh, thanks. Very much. So everybody's really whipped up, ready yeah. for this. Yay, we've got Kevin Waitley, we've got Lauren Scott. And I'm really <laughs> sorry, sorry about this. But we've just... The only bit of shit that we could get <laughs> was Rebecca Front. On the bright side, we don't think she has any major health problems, so yeah. we'll probably be able to do it. 
But if James Pat gets better, she'll be out. Don't worry, we'll be out. She'll be out. Left in no doubt. Um, good. Uh, so, Grandma's house, is that done and dusted, or is there going to be more of those? I think it's done and dusted, which is a shame, really, because I was really enjoying that. It was good fun. It was good fun. That we didn't. None of us really enjoyed doing the first series. It was really? really stressful. <laughs> um, and then we did really enjoy doing the second one, so ever since then we've been nagging Simon and Dan Schweimer to write some more, but yeah. I don't think they want to, which he's is a shame. Has he been off in America? Simon's off touring and doing yeah. a lot of stand-up, and Dan's busy writing other things, but... Um, yeah, no, it's a shame because I love doing it and I made some really good friends doing it. Me and Sam Spiro, who played my sister, yeah. these two sisters who hate each other and became really, really good good friends. So it would have been nice to do some more, but there you go. I could, I could write a thing where you're my mum and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, could do it. you think anyone's going to buy that? <laughs> <laughs> If I'm Benjamin Button, I'm Benjamin you. Button. <laughs> yeah. I did actually think he looked like you on the cover of that magazine. Uh, did you? Yeah, Brad you. Pitt, yeah. yeah. I do look like Brad Pitt. That's why these people, a lot of these people come thinking it's Brad Pitt. <laughs> have you have you ever, you've worked with pretty much everyone. Have you worked with Brad Pitt? I haven't worked with Brad have Pitt. Because like sometimes I saw like, I was watching Wolf of Wall Street, which I mentioned uh, the, the last week or two weeks ago, uh, which is a terrible film. But halfway through, uh, Joanna Lumley's in it. It's kind of fun when you see oh, that. Yeah, she is. When that's you right. see, and she kind of, and, and Leonardo DiCaprio tries to get off with her. Yeah, that's so, right. And that's that. kind of quite good fun. And mm. you think that. Is there, is, there, is there anything like that? Have you been in those kind of. Uh, who's the. I haven't done any sort of big movie things, no. Um, although, you know, I'd be up for time. it. I'd be up for it. Obviously, <laughs> if it came up. But um, no, I've just <coughs> done. Uh, I'm doing some more dramas as well as comedy at the moment. Yeah. So I'm kind of nudging a little bit in that direction. But no, basically, I'm still doing the kind of crap you write. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I wish I could get you in. I wish I could write something that would get on. Uh, but, uh, um, well, because you were in the radio, so my wife pointed me towards. Because uh, my research was so bad, I didn't see this. Uh, that uh, you were in the Radio Times talking about uh, older actors and actresses. Oh, God. Was it in the magazine? Yeah, I think. Well, it was on the web website. It was website. on the website, yeah. yeah. Yes, that was on those... Yes. Hmm. I, just, I was doing an interview about the book, yeah. and um, so I just was chatting, and then, yes, it, you have to be slightly careful what you say, because <laughs> things get out on websites. I mean, it wasn't a pri- there wasn't an audience, so I suppose I was kind of happy to say it in public, but... Um, but of course, also it always it's always slightly different. It's slightly truncated when you see it written down. It's not quite because what it what I'd said in this interview was I was talking about um, about there the being fewer. You know, it, it's the thing that you hear actors saying all the time, or actresses saying all the time that as you get older there are fewer parts and so on. And touch wood, I mean, I'm getting quite a lot of parts, yeah. so I wasn't moaning about that. But what I was saying was that I I'd been sent quite a few scripts where the character that I'm supposed to go up for, I'm supposed to, or I'm being offered is meant to be, according to the script, is meant to be 60 or 65. And I'm not 60 or 65, I'm very considerably younger than that. And the point I was making was they shouldn't, you know, if they're offering parts of 60 and 65 year olds to women who are in their late 40s or early 50s, then what are the actresses who are 60 or 65 gonna get? And it has a knock on effect. And I think the way it was reported was sort of, I I now get cast as 65 year olds, (laughs) (laughs) which, which I like to think I don't, but I don't think that's why, I don't think it's because casting director looking at me and thinking, well, you're clearly 65. I think it's just that thing of they think, well, we don't want to have a 65-year-old, so we'll get someone <laughs> like her in. I think that's, that was what the yeah. point I was trying to make. It's, a, it's an odd thing about... Um, I mean, it's, it's a very difficult profession being an actor. I mean, obviously, you're doing writing as well, so mm. you've, that, that's... If it, if it does all go <laughs> it wrong... goes belly up. <laughs> you know, books, well, yeah. no, but, it's, but that's... It is... You know, I think we were, we were talking to uh, Sarah about... Uh, female comedians being judged in certain ways, but then there is this kind of... Uh, I think TV increasingly is about youth. Is, oh, I mean, is, even yeah. like we talk, so old tricks now. Nick, we were talking about this the other week. Nicholas Lindhurst is yeah. now old enough to be in old tricks, yeah. which that's not right. That's like they've gone... Tam- someone's gone old, old tricks. Really it's young. like all old people. Mm. Can't we get some younger people in this to be... Yeah. <laughs> it's too, that's the point. It's about to be a group of old people, then they've got like a 50-year-old man in there. Well, and there's a, there's a sort of... Um, the, the added weirdness that actually the, the majority of people watching a lot of television, not just that kind of show, but a lot of television, are older, in fact. Yeah. So there's no, re- there's no reflection of that at all. It is, it is weird. I mean, I think we have an odd relationship. I think we, as a population, or we as human beings, have an odd relationship to ageing. Um, and I do. I mean, I'm very... I, I related to a lot of what you were saying earlier about mortality and, and 
at that fear. I completely got what you're saying about that fear of not being attractive anymore. Even when you know, I'm very happily married. I have absolutely no desire to <laughs> go off with anybody else. But I would like to think that I've still got it going on. And unfortunately, <laughs> you do sort of you start to get quite paranoid about it as you get a bit older you kind of think well nobody could possibly possibly find me attractive and then you sort of think well actually that's really unfair it's just <laughs> not nice and I don't want to think about that I don't want to think about it either because I don't um, like thinking about you as a sexual being because uh, I'm, but, your, uh, I'm your older so sister I, if, you, if anyone finds you attractive while I'm around I'm going to I was going to say I'm going to bat them off, but that sounds better than it is. <laughs> I'm not going to bat them off. Talking of people finding you sexually attractive, you should go on uh, Brit Comedy Confessions. Well, I'm going I think to would, after I tonight. think it would cheer you up a great deal. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's quite, there, are, there are a lot. There are a lot. Of, I'm not even going to read all of them. and they're, they're not, they're nice. A lot of them are like... Can we give 30 seconds for my son to leave the room? Yeah, <laughs> well... A lot of them, I think, like for, if your son can think of it as the character rather than his own mother, that these <laughs> awful things are happening to. But I would remind your son that the reason he's here is because of the disgusting things <laughs> his mother once did. So. No, we've already established it was a virgin. <laughs> oh, that's right, yeah, sorry, yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, yes, I'm completely straight. And yes, She's old enough to be my mother. This is written by a very, <laughs> uh, very young person. But me and my friend have had many a conversation on what phone sex would be like with Rebecca Front. It's the voice, you and see, that it's the gorgeous low voice. voice of hers. That low voice again. Yeah. yeah. So you're enough to turn, I'm guessing, a... You know why phone sex? You know why? Because then they don't have to look at me. That's <laughs> oh. what it is. All right, that wasn't a good place to start. I've, with the, oh, she's old enough to be my mother and <laughs> is, is very unattractive. I, now I... Now I realize, how about this? Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah, your, your son should definitely shut his. Uh, well, no, although I think about it, your son uh, has fulfilled this one. Uh, oh, oh, what I wouldn't give to be between Rebecca Front's fabulous legs. <laughs> is that is that all? That's, <laughs> that's all that is. Well, that's quite nice. That's, that's sort of. A, do you know I actually had? So, um, <laughs> I actually, <laughs> no, trust me, it's not that bad. Um, somebody tweeted me something or, or copied me in on a tweet a couple of years ago which said something <laughs> like um i have this fantasy it was obviously a brief version of this but i can't do it in 134 characters or whatever i have this fantasy about a threesome with rebecca front and i thought oh hello what's this and it's no a threesome with rebecca front and scarlett johansson and i thought oh that's interesting and the threesome involved him this person whoever he was having sex with scarlett johansson and then talking to me about it <laughs> <laughs> Probably with a bag over my head, I don't know. But it was very much, you know, because she's nice. <laughs> and you can have a chat with her, you know, but I'll do all the other stuff. But just waiting for it to, you yeah. know. I'd just be sitting um, there knitting. Oh, I'm ready to go again now. Sorry, excuse me, Rebecca. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, I've just had sex with Scarlett Johansson. Right. Oh, tell amazing. me about it. I'll put the kettle on. You tell me all about it. We'll have a lovely old chat. Uh, Rebecca running up the women, prissy, uptight, and wearing a corset. Just fuck. You know, have you seen me in Up the Women? I have. Now, Up the Women is the part where I'm actually meant to be about 65. I've got a steel grey wig, and they, they, they deliberately heighten the colour on my cheek so it looks like I'm about to have a, a seizure or something. I'm not attractive sounds in the like, least in Up the Women. Sounds like you're just about to come into your uh, golden era of sex. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> With really perverts on seriously the weird. OK, this one again is about a character. On my hands and knees. This one's weird because it doesn't sound like fancy. It sounds like something that has happened. <laughs> that's what I, so I just want to know. I, well, that's what I want to find out. On my hands and knees, silk around my wrists, tying me to the bed frame, Malcolm Tucker's hands knotted in my hair as I suck his cock. Is this you? Rich? No. <laughs> uh, Doctor Who, maybe, but not Malcolm Tucker. Uh, Nicola... Nicola Murray. He's got two cocks, you know. That's the, oh, no, it's hearts, isn't it? Uh, Nicola... <laughs> Nicola... Might have to die for lactic. Uh, Nicola Murray fucking me from behind with a strap on. I've never come so hard in my life. <laughs> Which to me sounds like that, that is something that... It's not like it I would it never come happen. so hard. I never came so hard in my life <laughs> as when that happened. So you and Malcolm Tucker, you in character and, and Peter Cavaldi in character, had sex with someone. I'm guessing... It could be, I mean, it could be a man, it could be a woman. I'm guessing it's a woman, but it could be a man. 
Did that happen? It, it, <laughs> so, it didn't happen. I think I think okay. I would have remembered. No, I don't All think right. it. And what, we'll do one more because I'm quite interested in the silk scarf. Yeah, well, this thing is nice quite detail. nice. That's the only bit that sounds quite yeah. fetching, you know. Well, you could wear that later. Yeah, it'd be yeah. lovely. Yeah. Yeah. While I'm chatting about this bloke having sex with Scarlett Johansson, I could. Be, Dapperly dressed with a silk scarf around. I think that guy would fiddle with you a bit while he was talking. No, I think, I, I, I think, I, you, I think I just uh, very definitely did not get that feeling. I think just like, oh, I'm just gonna, I've got to go back to Scarlet. <laughs> it's, it's fair enough. I mean, Scarlet's that's, over there. Forgive me, love. <laughs> uh, Rebecca Front dominating me with endless, rough, noisy fucking. This is you on your own. And this is my. De- this is why I like this one. And Sue Perkins watching silently in the corner. <laughs> <But> <laughs> One good thing about that is that is that now Sue has been relegated. Yeah. <laughs> but she doesn't even get to discuss it. It's like, <laughs> you're just going to say there silently in the <laughs> corner. <laughs> Thinking up jokes for Bake Off. Even not getting aroused by it, just not. But just watch. Just. Who are these people? Well, see, well, hopefully Sue is going to be on the show in a couple of weeks. So we'll ask we'll, her about it. We will it's ask whether she's up for that. Are you up? I mean, in the theory, depending on who the person you are, uh, endlessly rough, noisily fucking, <laughs> would you be up yeah, for that? I haven't with, got the energy for okay, that. I mean, true. do these people not... You know, you get tired of it. Yeah. You forget it. It's who a lot needs of, it? It's a lot of... It's a hard work being just watch the telly. It's Fair so enough. much nicer. All right. Well... <laughs> I'll ask you another an emergency question to... Please do. Because it's... I mean... You know, I didn't enjoy asking those questions, Rebecca. From, I want you to know that. I enjoyed asking uh, Sarah Miller. How man. much did you enjoy asking Sarah Miller? A lot. I really did enjoyed you? it. Did you yeah. really enjoy asking? Because she was, like, the first person I've done it to, I was genuinely slightly uncomfortable about. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that is my sexual fantasy. Uh, well, I, I'm, if you go to Brit Comedy Commissions, all mine are, I would like to tell lots of comedians... What other people's sexual fantasies <laughs> are, them are, whilst I watch their reaction. Silently. Silently moving around. Uh, if you could choose between having a hand made out of ham. Hand made out of what? Uh, you didn't like my penis question, so I'm going to go more sophisticated. <laughs> a hand made out of ham. You just ask me that because I'm Jewish. Uh, I mean, no, I ask everyone, e- even if they are Jewish. Okay. That is how uh, uh, unprejudiced I am. <laughs> A hand made out of ham. A hand made out of ham or an armpit that dispenses sun cream. <laughs> an armpit that what? That has expensive well, sun cream. What programs are you, what interviews are you doing with people that this is an unusual interview? <laughs> Think, oh, I've come here from my with my BAFTA awards. <laughs> I'm not answering your question about ham hands. <laughs> it's an armpit, it's got like a little nozzle in it, you go like that and some sun cream comes oh, out. Dispenses yeah, sun dispenses cream. Sun cream. That's a br- Brilliant idea. Yeah, or a hand made out of hand. No, no, I don't want that. No, because I'm vegetarian. I don't want that. You don't have I want to eat sun it. cream. It's just a talking point. <laughs> <laughs> well, I find the BAFTA is a talking point. Um, <laughs> I have got a bronze Sony Award. So. Have you? I haven't got, no, I haven't got one of those. I have got a comedy award now okay. as well, which I'm pleased about. Because um, it's about fucking time. Um, <laughs> um, uh, no, I want the sun cream thing. Yeah. Mm, that's that's very practical. That's actually a very sensible idea. If you patent that, you will have no more one money worries ever. Okay, I'll probably, I'll do that, that could work. Thank you. See, I knew we'd How get do you actually do? You have to you have to kind of do, do that. that. Yeah, so it's yeah, that's not quite so good. You have to do it? that and then put your hand underneath to get then so it. Make that like farty trying noise. To do that thing. But yeah. Then you just but then sun cream, cream comes out. out. Could you do it with things like hair gel and stuff as well? I don't think we can do that. I think that would be a <laughs> blasphemy against the people who ask for different liquids inside their client their armpit gland, but if you start allowing that, that's where madness lies, if you keep going, <laughs> keep going down uh, that level. Uh, if you could choose between, I can't remember what the choices are now of these two, between having um, a tit that dispensed uh, talcum powder, that's right, isn't it? Or a, <laughs> I have to turn to my audience, I've asked so many of these questions, or a, a finger that could travel through time, but just your finger could travel through time. <laughs> Poor, I mean, I can't believe you just don't have answers ready for these. Yeah, I do, like I do, think Richard. About these I, so I it's like thinking. enough uh, talcum powder to an endless supply of talcum powder. The sun cream is limited to your usage in a year, but the talcum oh, powder, you, you, could, you, could actually, you could actually just keep, if you were prepared to keep puffing mm. away, 
you could just sell talcum powder. Terms or, and conditions apply. Yeah. Um, <laughs> or no, a finger that can travel through time and you can touch things in the past or the future. Why would, surely nobody picks the talcum powder tip, no, do they? Why would any, but everybody wants the tri time travelling finger? Yeah. Well, then why are you asking the question? <laughs> One day I'll meet the person who wants the talcum powder. And if you ever meet that person, yeah. will you please text me and tell okay, me? I will do. I'd be I might, really happy, happy to know that. that. Where would your finger go if you could put it, <laughs> send it anywhere in time? Um, it would go back to Georgian times. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like the 1820s. Yeah, that's exactly where. 1824. <laughs> what? what uh, is that because it was before the police force had been established and you could get away with some crimes? <laughs> there were the Bow Street Runners were there, but the uh, Robert Peels, the Peelers, actually, the was he? There? Now I've got confused. 1840 was when Robert Peel established. Was that the Bow Street Runners he established? My audience have got a lot more stupid. I tell you, in the, I've noticed this. In the early days, I could ask any question, and four people would go, yes, Richard, that is right. Now I ask a question. I ask a question on tour about, uh, you know, Samuel Pepys, the diarist, because uh, I do a thing about kissing people through kisses. Um, I was kissed by my 90-year-old uh, great-auntie on the lips when I was five years old. It was my first kiss on the lips. Uh, and uh, so that I explains everything. So I, um, <laughs> I want to kiss a five-year-old relation of mine when I'm 90. So that's why I don't want to die, so that I can kiss a five-year-old on the lips then. And then it's important they're at least five, so they remember it. That's the reason. Uh, and uh, I'll have straddled. It sounds perverted in the middle of this. Straddled, it's a very sweet routine. What? What? I've spent 200 years with two kisses, like oh, three right. different centuries. But uh, Samuel Pepys, the novelist, the diarist rather, he uh, kissed Catherine of Valois uh, on the lips uh, four centuries after she died. Because uh, she was there. And this is the thing that I wanted. I've asked two audiences on tour this, because I haven't been bothered to Google it. <laughs> Whose wife was Catherine of Who was the husband of Catherine of Valois? What's gone wrong with you people? I tell you, the old days, the old audiences were much better. That someone would just straight in. It was like Wikipedia. I would just ask a question. I think it's like Henry the Second or someone. Henry the Fifth. There we go. Henry the Fifth. <laughs> so you knew, or have you? <laughs> you had just told me back. So you all still know the answers. We go, no, Rich. We're not giving you free facts. <laughs> you struggle on your own. Henry the Fifth's wife was in um, Westminster Abbey. Samuel Pepys went to visit, and they had just the corpse. They had the bodies lying just in the abbey, and Samuel Pepys kissed Catherine of Valois on the lips. He kissed a corpse on the lips? Yeah, because then he could say, I've kissed a queen. It was like a massive pervert. It's amazing that, you know, if the Operation Utree had been around there, we wouldn't even know Samuel Pepys, because he wouldn't yeah. be... You're not allowed to... If you've done something perverted and you get caught, you're not, your work gets struck off now, and that's it. It's like not top, allowed of, the on top is, of the pops yeah, anymore, yeah. They can't show those top of the pops anymore. They, 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 they allow Michael Jackson one still on. That's the that's the irony. But uh, they were on an endless loop. I yeah. mean, I, I can't help thinking maybe it's a kind of editing process now that they're just finding a way of filtering them down. Right, we're not showing that one. We're not showing that one. Yeah, but yeah you're right. There's nobody left that you can show. There's, well, there's two Lee and Herring uh, top of the pops that are showable for the short term. <laughs> uh, so uh, <laughs> I presented top of the pops. That's like I can't, you know. You presented top of the pops, yeah. did you? Yeah, twice. Why would I never get... I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Robson and Jerome really? were number one on one of them. That's Did you sort of stand there doing that classic Top of the Pops presenter thing, looking a bit gormless? Feeling up 50 yeah, strong yeah, girls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Well, we know it's that now. It's a good try. I'm trying to catch you. No, I did not. i tell you what. I just... It was so horrible, the atmosphere. The thing, like, loads of 15-year-old girls all a bit overexcited about seeing Robson and Jerome really smelling quite... Horrible, like unsweaty. Just like that's the most perverted thing about those DJs is that they were in the middle of that going, Wee! not going, oh God, when can I go home and get away from this, <laughs> these disgusting children? Uh, which is what I was thinking. But there we go. So you're safe with me. If you want to have me back on top of the pops, I'll just let anything on. Is there anything I can do on? <laughs> can I be on, can I be on Lewis? I could come on Lewis. You I could come on Lewis. A yeah. dead body or something. I'd just be murdered. I'd just be murdered. Just like, look, I'll show you. That's right. You could, you could be a dead postman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a dead old postman. <laughs> uh, let's go Georgian times. That's good. And what would you do with your finger in Georgian times? 
Uh, oh, I don't know. What would I do with my finger in George? <laughs> no, I'll, I'll let you off. I have no idea at all. I'd probably eat some posset. <laughs> what would it take for you to fillet the actor Keith Allen? <laughs> For me to fillet the, the actor, actor Keith, Keith Allen, what would you... Have you ever oh, worked Keith with Allen. Keith Allen? I have worked with Keith Allen. I've not fillated him. No, that's right. Um, you don't have to answer that question. I, well, you see, no, I I'm don't. not sure anyone has. Because no, well. he often gets his penis out. Does he? We well, the, the, the genesis of this question was Matthew Crosby telling me that he'd been in a bar once and Keith Allen had entered the bar and he, as he entered, he said, Who wants to suck my cock? And everyone just said... No. <laughs> I'm good, thanks. Yeah. I've just had a yeah. bap. <laughs> so what what would it take? What would you need to have in return? <laughs> what threats would you keep that and have to have? It would have to be a fairly life or death situation, yeah. okay. I have to say, yes. I mean, not just with Keith Allen, but just generally it's speaking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A complete stranger comes up to you in a bar. Yeah. You have to be pretty dire, I think. Okay. Good. That's, a, that's a good mother's answer to that yeah. question. <laughs> exactly, with her son in the nice. audience. Um, so, uh, cool. Well, uh, I'm sure there was something uh, very something important. Something else I need to know that I need you. to talk about. Oh, no, I've done that. Done that. Uh, no, I said everything um, is... Oh, no, I don't want to talk. I wanted to talk about... Uh, what, what were you oh, going to say? No, I was, well, I was just going to say to you, because I suddenly remembered sitting out there before listening to you talking about your forthcoming I child event. Yes, and do you remember what I bought you for your 40th birthday? You won't remember. Uh, I don't. I, I, all I remember alarming. about my 40th birthday is crying and having having to go home. Over, <laughs> a bit over excited. Well, you because you and Emma Kennedy yes. shared a 40th birthday. We thing. did. And I bought because I was struggling to think what can I get you both for your birthday because you know what do you get people when they're 40? Um, and I bought you both a Tamagotchi. Mm. <laughs> and you both killed them very yes. quickly. <coughs> I was just thinking about it earlier when you were talking about killing plants yeah. off and things like that. And I thought, if you can't even keep fucking <laughs> tamagotchi going. I really tried going. as well. I worked, I worked, I'd never had did one you? before, and I really tried to keep it going, and it did die. Isabel Fay, who's a great comedian, uh, calls her child. She's had, just had a baby, and she calls it a high-risk Tamagotchi. <laughs> which is... <laughs> I remember getting a, getting a text message from Emma Kennedy about three months after her birthday, <laughs> at which point I kind of forgot and I bought you the Tamagotchi. Yeah, yeah. um, just saying, I hate your guts. <laughs> <laughs> I said, why? And then she texted me back and she said, because it's finally died. And I've been trying, three months she'd yeah. been trying to keep this thing alive. Well, both of us are quite obsessive about stuff like that. So it was, a, it was kind of a, a, a good kind of torture present. price to give us <laughs> both. And it to be an innocent kind of present. Yeah, lost of my, But yeah, I, had a t I actually had a text. That was, I had two 40th birthdays. Parties. Oh, was I at the B list? You were, no, you were at the big one, but then I had I had a smaller one on my for proper birthday. friends, the people you actually like. Yeah, yeah, for, <laughs> for people I'm not intimidated and afraid of, uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, have too much respect for, despite the, everything I've said in this. Uh, but uh, no, because we, we had this joint one, and I really, because I was, I really got to me turning forty, and, and actually for a little bit afterwards, but then I was fine about it, and I. Apart from the degeneration, I'm very happy about being uh, in my 40s. Uh, but uh, I was really, I think like my, um, my ex-girlfriend or the girlfriend I'd just broken up with turned up at that party in, with, a guy, with a very, very good looking guy. Oh, uh, that's a bit and, off. Uh, and also there were just loads of, it was a bit of like, you know, it was the, have you seen the uh, terrible film with that guy who's now won an Oscar? Uh, who's um, in uh, oh, Matthew McConaughey, mm. uh, Girlfriends of Christmas Past, or something it's called, isn't it? Have you seen this? It's t he's done a lot of terrible films. <laughs> he's sort of like this, until he won an Oscar or got nominated for an Oscar, he was like, he was the sliding doors of actors, basically. That was <laughs> every film. If you saw him in a film, it was guaranteed to be terrible. Uh, but it's about, there were, it was just like all my ex girlfriends were at that party, because I stay very good friends with my ex girlfriends. But then it was just like being haunted by the oh, failure of no. my romantic dreams. I got very drunk and then I got a taxi. Two of my friends kindly took me home in a taxi because they realised how uh, you know, that I, knew, uh, I was an emotional wreck. And then I tried to persuade them to have a threesome with me. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a great night. Uh, <laughs> and they, and they, they said no. <laughs> but in a nice way. See, I went home about 9.30. Did you? Yeah, it was yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> I always do from past. God knows what I'd have said to yeah. you if you'd been around once again. You give me a Tamagotchi, I never knew anyone could care this much about me. I'm going to have a threesome now and you can sit in the corner and talk to me about it. <laughs> <laughs> 
so that was that. But then I had another 40th birthday on my birthday. Well, I just went, went, went to the British Museum with Ben Moore. And then I had some lunch with some friends and I went to see a Die Hard 4.0. <laughs> which wasn't very good. Uh, and uh, then we had a curry. Was, that was nice. Well, thank you for sharing. And I was exactly for I went to see the Piltdown. Is it the Piltdown Man? I'm, I'm really tired today. <laughs> I, should have, I should have taken the night off, really, but I thought it would be rude for all of you people. Uh, is the Piltdown Man the, the one in the uh, bog? Yeah, uh, is that yeah. a Piltdown Man? Yeah, because yeah. I thought I'd go and see someone more fucked up and <laughs> leathery and old than me. That was what I did in the morning. That was quite good. Ah, now I'm 47. I'd ah, give Emily to, to be 40 now. It's weird, isn't it, the way it works? There we Funny go. Funny old game. It is, it's a terrible. But now you look like Brad Pitt, and you didn't yeah. look like Brad Pitt then. No, that's true. But then he's actually slightly older than but, you. Yeah. But now <laughs> I'm married to someone else, so it's no good looking like Brad Pitt now. So she is. She's nice looking. She is. Nice You've done well. I have done quite well. And I got a pregnant, so. <laughs> <laughs> Who's gorgeous? My wife, she's yes. lovely. Yeah, just leave her alone. Get out. <laughs> and let, well, let's have a look at you first, and then... Uh, <laughs> uh, would you be up for having a threesome <laughs> with a, four, a woman who's four and a half months pregnant? <laughs> and uh, discuss it. I'll just... You can do it, and I'll just... You can turn to me and go, oh, that's nice, isn't that? Okay. Uh, <laughs> we won't do that. Do you have any advice for me? Uh, you have brought up two children, one of whom I've just seen. Mm -hmm. See, seems to be unbroken and yeah, alive. Yes. Are you still there? Yes, I think you might. I might have broken him tonight, yeah. <laughs> at least mentally. Do, is there any advice you have for me? Because Sarah Millican's never had a child, so she could give me no advice. Um, uh, it's, I mean, not funny advice, but no. I can give you some straight advice, okay. proper advice, which is um, listen, or explain and listen. They're my two watchwords. Mm. Explain everything and listen, because you... When you hear, you know, like kids going nuts in supermarkets and all that kind of stuff, you know, tantrums, and it's you, I mean, it's not entirely because of this, sometimes it's just that they have tantrums, but it is usually because they're not being listened to, I think. So if you explain what you're doing and if you listen to what their problem is, it works. That is my advice to you. It properly, properly works. Sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, but you've got to do that. You've got to just let have a tantrum. Yeah, you can you a go, bit, but. What I thought I'd do is say, you know, this is my house, you have to do what I say. Yeah, you can try that. That's, That's certainly an option. Uh, I didn't ask for you to be born, I'm going to say that. <laughs> You've ruined my life. You can try that one as well. And my career. I used to have a yeah. career. You can try that. I'm quite, you know, it gives me a get out clause. That's what I think. It's fine. I'll just, I'm going to concentrate. I'm going to pretend I'm like a good father. Go, yeah, yeah I can't do any of the comedy stuff anymore because I've got to look up. I've got to look after my baby. Cause I, I do that all the time. Yeah, well, I can't baby. now because I'm 16 and 13. <laughs> you know, they look after themselves. But I, you know, I have, I mean, yeah. Because you, obviously you want to. Yeah. You actually, this is my way of making up for all the, those awful sexual things that were going on before. Um, but you want to. You want to be at home with them because they're lovely and they're fun and yeah. they're nice and they're great oh. fun and I like them. Oh. But then yours might not be as nice as mine. No. <laughs> that's, You're that's welcome to come problem. and babysit as much as you like. Well, I've got two teenage kids who could yeah. babysit for you. Yeah, well. I'm not letting that one But there is, there is that. <laughs> <laughs> The younger one's fine, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. she's, she's a girl and she's yeah. still, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, that, mine are exceptionally wonderful children and obviously most people don't have children quite as exceptionally wonderful as mine. I'm, I'm really sorry about that, but that is the case. <laughs> that is, well, that's good parenting. I think it's very, it's very what a lucky children they are. Have. They are lucky children, they are. aren't they, Rich? Wouldn't they you are. Say? I, I, I would say they are really lucky children. <laughs> I, hope, I hope he thanks you for everything you've done. Not um, that often, no. actually, no, but he's very sweet. I remember he was really little, and, I, and then now he's all. I know it's weird. Now he's a giant. He's six foot one. Thirteen or years ridiculous. ago, he was like two years old. He used to come into rehearsals he for is. Time, Gentlemen, Please, didn't yeah. he? Do you remember Time, Gentlemen, Please? Now, he probably the does. He remembers everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, look, it's been really lovely uh, to talk to you. Uh, I now have to go to bed. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, with my wife and that woman. <laughs> Do you, take a punch. do you want me to come along and just come talk along. about it afterwards? We can all, be I think everyone would like to have a word with you afterwards <laughs> <laughs> about what's happened in your capacity as the police chief. Yeah, the, with my low voice. Yeah. It'd be very nice. We give a massive round of applause to my fantastic guest, Rebecca, from, from Off of Everything.